I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. Today, indeed, Hello Soulmates, plenty to talk about on this MLK Day, January 16th. Welcome to Fox Soul's Black Report. I am Courtney Hicks. And I'm the Cordelia Corte, especially on this King Day. We are honored to stand behind this desk each and every day to take you on a journey across black America and the stories that impact our people. We are dedicated to bringing you our news, our views and our voice. Topping the news today, almost 40 years ago today, President Ronald Reagan signed a bill making Martin Luther King's birthday a federal holiday. 18 years after his death, that sent anger and sadness through much of the nation. However, today, special ceremonies and events happening all across the nation to honor the legacy of the most iconic civil rights leader ever. Dr. King was on the balcony of the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, getting ready to have dinner when he was shot and killed. James Earl Ray later confessed and was found guilty and sent to prison for Dr. King's murder. But conspiracy theories, of course, remained. Now, the area around the motel is now the National Civil Rights Museum. Today's event included songs and speeches paying tribute to Dr. King's legacy. And throughout our show, we'll also be honoring his legacy and contributions to the culture. President Biden makes history in Atlanta. He's the first sitting president to deliver a sermon at the same house of worship where Dr. King served as pastor. The president's message on Sunday to remember and honor Dr. King's legacy. He was joined and introduced by United States Senator Raphael Warnock, who also happens to be a reverend like Martin Luther King Jr. During Biden's sermon, he spoke on moving forward. Well, my message to the nation on this day is we go forward. We go together. When we choose democracy over autocracy, a beloved community over chaos. In 1960, Martin Luther King Jr. became co-pastor of the church with his father until his assassination in 1968. Since 2005, U.S. Senator Raphael Warnock has been the senior pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church and is the fifth person to serve as Ebenezer's senior pastor since its founding. And if you were expecting an Amazon package, it won't be coming today. Many still forget that Martin Luther King Day is a federal holiday, meaning several government offices are closed today. That includes the Postal Service, Social Security offices, and DMVs. And for all you Wall Street watchers, the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ are also closed today as well. There are 10 states all in the South that celebrate Martin Luther King Day and at least one Confederate holiday. That's right, in 2023, states are still celebrating Confederate holidays and those states are on your screen. Lawmakers say that the states that continue to celebrate the wrong values highlights the country's struggle to reconcile its racist past. States like Mississippi and Alabama celebrate uh, MLK and Robert E. Lee, the losing general and slave holder on the same day, might I add. Defenders of these Confederate holidays and monuments say removing them would erase American history. Definitely huh? a, sp a special day. Uh, today, as always, on January 16th, 15th, 16th, as we uh, continue to uh, commemorate, I think the thing that comes to mind is this particular generation, the MLK generation, we are unfortunately, you know, losing as they are, you know, moving on to, to join uh, the ancestors. And so each, each one of these uh, holidays becomes more and more special, especially when we can continue to tap in to those who stood shoulder to shoulder uh, with Dr. King. So always a special day to just take some time out, whether it's a, a day of service or maybe an off day, and you just tap in um, and reflect uh, about the message. And, and dig a little deeper, because I know we, we hone in on the I Have a Dream speech, but uh, Dr. King gave some amazing, incredible uh, speeches as he was the, the supreme orator, if you will. And you can really tap into the entire message, because as the civil rights movement uh, evolved and changed and faced challenges, so did some of his messages. 
So. Yeah, yeah, and, and what's so wonderful about this holiday, I think, is that it's just another opportunity for us to learn so much more about the hidden figures that uh, are still mm -hmm. among us. They may be mm -hmm. a whole lot older than they used to be, but uh, they're still among us. And, you know, it really speaks to the rich legacy that Dr. King has left behind, that has, has stood the test of time, decades and decades, That's you know, right. after uh, he walked this earth. Uh, there are so many young people at the time that mm -hmm. are now older people mm -hmm. who remember his work as a call to action. Uh, and uh, we get to celebrate MLK and we get to c celebrate the generations of people that continue to hear that call That's to action. Right. And, and plenty are still here because, you know, this was a movement of the young. You know, you talk about SNCC, and so a lot of these folks might be in their late 60s, 70s, uh, 80s, and, and, are, and are very much uh, with it and are able to uh, talk about and share uh, their experiences, which is also always fascinating because as, as someone, as, as, a, as a daughter of the um, uh, parents of the civil rights movement, you, 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 you normally just read about it or you just might catch some stories here and there, but um, you know, as they are shared amongst all, they just become fascinating to me, and 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 just really illustrate um, that this thing was real, real, <laughs> real, real. That's right. Indeed, we're going to continue to uh, celebrate and uh, reflect on the holiday, but we also want to get into some other headlines. So let's go to San Francisco, where Mayor London Breed is now speaking out in support of a homeless woman seen on video being uh, hosed down uh, outside a gallery. You may have seen this over the weekend as that video this here went viral. Uh, Mayor Bre Breed addressed the incident, calling it a, quote, assault. The man who sprayed the woman is uh, art gallery owner Collier Gwynn. He has since apologized for his actions. Gwynn and other business owners uh, in that area say they called police several times over the woman's disruptive behavior. In the days leading up to the incident, Mayor Breed had this to say. As far as I'm concerned, it's assault, uh, and there should be um, consequences, and, and clearly we know that there are people on our streets who are struggling with mental illness, with substance use disorder. Um, we know that people are very frustrated, uh, but this is not the solution. This is not um, how you take out your frustrations and your anger. During the opening of a new health care center for the homeless, Mayor Breed says she hopes this new facility will help the homeless in the city and get them off the streets and into treatment. Schools may need to rethink everything, including recruitment, scholarships, standardized testing and alumni preferences, as the Supreme Court is considering a pair of cases that could have huge, huge ramifications on affirmative action. The justices heard arguments about whether race-based decisions on college admissions should be stopped. The cases are focusing on if Harvard and the University of North Carolina have been discriminating against Asian American applicants by giving higher preference to black and Hispanic applicants. Those in support say affirmative action acknowledges the desperate effects that racism has on traditionally marginalized Americans. And checking back in with this just horrific weather, at least 19 people have been killed with the death toll expected to rise after a series of storms tore through the south over the weekend. Search and recovery efforts are still underway with people trapped in their homes. Fox, Fox's Charles Watson is in Georgia with the latest. The South still reeling this weekend after a string of tornadoes carved a path of devastation across multiple states. In Georgia, crews are hard at work trying to reach people who could still be trapped. The storms uprooting trees, sending them crashing through homes and vehicles. The wind so strong, they even derailed a freight train southeast of Atlanta. Those who were forced to ride it out left shaken by the experience. In Alabama, tornadoes snapped trees and utility posts and damaged or destroyed countless homes. The storm developing so rapidly that people in its path had little time to react. Me and my wife got on the floor and covered ourselves with a mattress. Historic Selma, Alabama, one of the hardest hit communities, homes, businesses, and even churches saw their roofs ripped off and windows blown out. The city synonymous with a turning point in the civil rights movement, now facing a long road to recovery. Even though we have that history, that's our history, and we need to focus on our present and our future. Our present is to get Selma back up and running. 
Alabama's governor says she expects President Biden to make a disaster declaration, which will free up federal money and resources to help them rebuild. In Griffin, Georgia, Charles Watson, Fox News. My goodness. Okay, now in California, Biden has ordered federal aid to help areas affected by severe winter storms and subsequent flooding, landslides and mudslides that began back on December 27th. And we've talked a, a few times, Nick Cordelai, about this weather and we, you know, attached and talk about uh, global warming and you can have that conversation. But I think sometimes it does not uh, directly address and help those who are on the ground suffering from such uh, devastation and and loss, uh, you know, we talk about the material, uh, which, uh, you know, really doesn't even matter uh, most times in cases like this when there's been such a huge uh, loss of, of life. And uh, just looking at some of the videos over the weekend, uh, people, you know, cries of desperation uh, for help. Uh, I, I saw one uh, video where uh, a group of uh, folks were on their porch emerging after the tornado hit, and they thought they heard a baby crying. And you just it was just... Uh, pure devastation, especially the hardest hit, which would be the Selma area. And as you heard in that package, uh, area that we hold very dear to our hearts when we talk about uh, the civil rights movement and how important that city has been throughout that history. Yeah, and, and to your point earlier about global warming, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we see, just see example after example of climate change, you know, of, uh, you know, really terrible storms that are hitting different parts of the country in different ways. Um, and, you know, I th just sort of keeping a glass half full mm -hmm. perspective on this, I think it's an opportunity to build back better. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've been to Selma uh, and, um, you know, I see sort of the areas where they, it's been void of investment for a long time. And so, you know, there are many blessings that sometimes come from uh, tragedies mm -hmm. like this, and I think you know one of those could be supercharging the development mm -hmm. um, in Selma and some of the neighboring areas of Alabama with federal dollars. And so, you know, our hearts continue to be with yeah. uh, the folks on the ground. Um, but taking the long view on this, you know, I hope that uh, Selma and the neighboring areas emerge sort of stronger than ever with that additional federal aid. I would agree, definitely. All right, now, well, the impact of Dr. Martin Luther King has lived on for decades and will do so for many years to come. One of the things that Dr. King inspired many to do is give back. Mm. And today, communities across the country are helping one another in the name of Dr. King. Here's a look at the day of service going on in New York City. Take a look. What you do now and what you decide now at this age may well determine which way your life shall go. Martin Luther King Day is the only federal holiday designated as a national day of service to encourage all Americans to volunteer to improve their communities. Across the city, there are many organizations who plan activities around it. Volunteer New York is one of them. Our section is from that building that's on the beach there, that comfort station, all the way to about to this comfort station. You can find activities all over the city, like this one organized in Coney Island to help clean up the beach, and this one in Brooklyn where items were donated benefiting homeless shelters, women in local teen pregnancy housing, and families in domestic violence centers. A day of service is something the city's Parks Department has been doing for years. I like to volunteer. I like to volunteer at the parks, and I saw that there's this awesome opportunity for MLK Day. There are different things planned in parks in every borough. In Forest Park in Queens, volunteers will participate in leaf raking and vine removal, just like these volunteers who help clean up Malcolm X Park. On MLK Day, in the spirit of Martin Luther King, it's always right to do what's right. That's right, and make sure to check for MLK Day celebration events in your area. Some events run the entire week well into the weekend. Get out there and serve. Indeed. All right, continuing with honoring Dr. King's legacy, songs of joy and praise taking place at Pilgrim Baptist Church. That's in downtown Phoenix, Arizona. With the focus on faith, community, and legacy, Pastor Barnwell says today's holiday is just as important to celebrate as it was decades ago, especially with the state's past surrounding the day. 
the only state that actually had to vote it as a holiday. And so in doing that, the people came together and said, we want this. And so we came together and decided that we need to keep celebrating, keep it before us, um, keeping the legacy and life of Martin Luther King Jr. Um, living. Indeed, Pastor. Other ways the community in Phoenix is honoring the late civil rights leader today. There's a march, an MLK march from uh, Pilgrim West Baptist Church, followed by a festival at Hands Park and a parade in Mesa for those soulmates familiar with the area. And if you're like me and you enjoy a good hike or going to the park, if you're looking for something to do on the holidays, how about visiting a national park for free? The U.S. National Park Service is waiving entrance fees at all of its sites today. That includes 63 national parks, such as the Grand Canyon National Park. It's the first of five free days during the year. And the state of Arizona also making it easy to visit state parks. Entrance fees today will be waived for Arizona re residents at more than 30 state parks across Arizona. We love to see it. You know, mm -hmm. you know, Arizona I'll Senator you John represent. McCain, you know, um, was was slow on the uptake to support the MLK holiday. Yeah, I know we celebrate and, him as a hero, right? however. And if he was representing <laughs> his constituents, I, let me just say, you know, mm -hmm. how far Arizona has come, um, certainly in my lifetime. That's right. Uh, you know, uh, the MLK holiday as we mentioned at the top of the show, was signed into law by President Reagan mm -hmm. back in 1986, mm -hmm. right? And so mm -hmm. I was a toddler at the time. Oh. And, and to think that, you know, a number of folks that are, some of which who are still in Congress today, uh, we're slow on the, the oh, uptake yes. to, to support that. Yes. Um, in, but shout out to the spirit of Coretta Scott King mm -hmm. and so many others you know, who, who kept at it for nearly 20 years. In the entertainment industry. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. To make MLK Day a federal holiday. That's right. I was a, a sophomore in high school, so I, I remember the debate. I remember how slow footed. Uh, if you will, Arizona was just a tumultuous uh, debate and how really um, Arizona took a long time to recover um, from being seen, if you will, as a, as, a, as a racist state because they were very adamant about not uh, acknowledging uh, this holiday and not doing uh, what, what folks were, were prompting them to do and what other states around the country had already signed on to do. It was, uh, it, was, it was a battle. It really, really was. I remember it clearly. I remember discussing it in, in government class and, and in other classes uh, in, in school because it was, it was the talk of the day. And this is, this is prior to social media. Uh, you had to go to print for a lot of your information or just turn, turn into the national news to kind of hear what was going on. Um, there weren't a lot of, you know, videos from, from the entertainers. You heard the, the, the uh, Stevie Wonder song, mm -hmm. and, and that was, uh, you know, pretty much a lead for you to join that cause. But uh, it was a struggle. Yeah. It was a struggle. Well, so, this, so this day is very special when you take a look at back at very, how it became such a day. Very special, and the struggle mm -hmm. still continues. Still ahead, a student athlete's career is over mm -hmm. before it even begins. Yeah, we'll tell you the reason why he won't be completing his program. You're watching Fox Soul's Black report on MLK Day. Be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty. 